So as we are underway here on this Veterans Day here for game number two, Mission Wolves in the all-white kits going left to right, Vardar in the black and red kits going right to left. Alongside my broadcast partner, Rick Larson, I'm Jonathan Turner, bringing you all the action here for game number two on this Friday evening here from the St. Joe Sports Dome in Livonia. In the build. Hudson. Hudson with his first action. Now Hanoush. Hanoush now cuts it inside, top of the 18. Cuts it back again. Hanoush shot! And that's a save by Hammond. Hoped. Coates, oh, this is Hanoush. Hanoush keeps going. He's taken down by the goalkeeper, and a penalty shot is called. I'm going to tell you, I think that we have one of the most complex situations of refereeing that just occurred there because he got this around the gonna, goalkeeper. This is going to be a red card, I would imagine. He got We're around the goalkeeper and got a shot off, and I'm not so sure. So well, it would be a yellow card then because the penalty shot was awarded. But they have to say that their goalie was making a play at the ball. If that's the case, then it's not considered a red card. Well, the interesting thing here is that the... Oh, uh, he gave him a yellow, that so... he was making a play on the ball because the ball was right there because it was trickling. If the ball was hit with some... He, you know, this, he was taken down. But uh, here comes Hanus as he steps up, and he'll put it in. And the Wolves are going up here 1-0 here in this second half. Well, and we, Will Eby is back on the soccer field. And I'm not sure how the referee is going to sort this out. Cuts it back. Hanoush keeps fighting. Cuts it back again. Left-footed shot. Far post in. That is some goal by Ryan Hanoush. Did a great job with a couple of cuts at the top of the box. And then just tucked it in the bottom corner. Just smoked it with his. with the Michigan Soccer Network here with Will Eby. Will, fantastic performance tonight. I know that we just had a little chat over there, but uh, tell us a little bit about your injury and how you're able to continue on. Because I know early in the first half it happened and I saw you hobbling around and obviously you played for me before, so I, I can tell when there's a little hitch in your giddy up. And I said that in the broadcast, but you continued on and you continued on through halftime and continued to play really well. So tell us what happened. I mean, it comes from my upbringing, right? My parents inspired it in me, my teammates inspired it in me. Every day I work for them and that's why I do it. I don't stop for them just because of a small injury. I know it could affect the future, but this game was of massive importance to us and we knew that we had to get three points. And I just do everything in my power to make sure that happens. Awesome, man. Yeah, you played great. It uh, looks like you and Miles have a nice relationship back there. And then early on in the first half, it was like you'd pull out this way, Miles would pull out this way, and, and Dominic would come down in between you guys. And you look like you're really comfortable in the way that you kind of throw the round, throw the ball around in the back line. What are you trying to do when you bring Dominic low and you guys in those wide areas? What are you, what are you trying to? get for your team yeah. under those circumstances. Yeah, for us, it's just all about finding pockets of space and stuff like that. It's about getting us as wide as possible so we can advance the ball and get as many numbers off the field as possible, because that's ultimately where we want to keep it. We don't want to be able to just go from the, the 18 all the way up to midfield, just straight balls. We want to be able to keep it, keep possession. That's the best way to do it against a front two like that. Split them and make sure we can drive into the midfield be able to get out wide. Yeah, d direction of Markovsky caused a lot of trouble inside the box, and I thought in the first half, Whiskeyle did a really good job of getting up the right side and it was the other guy who was like uh pull a sec it's, it's not exactly that pull of check maybe but they got up the right side and they got a lot of crosses yeah. inside the box it caused a lot of trouble yeah. tell us what that kind of felt like in the first half because it was different the first half than the second yeah, absolutely and then i mean obviously seeing it from from the sideline was a little different than seeing it on the field but in the first half it just looked like it was us over committing in one area i mean we didn't set the traps we needed to on the sideline we went in and we went all with all of our numbers and that allowed them to go out the other side really easily. So I think a great second half adjustment and that we didn't bring all the guys out. We started to release our tens, release our eights somewhere around midfielders. So we didn't have all our guys going to once and it really started screening them and setting them in the traps to help us win the ball. 
Um, can you tell us a little bit about, uh, and, and the people at home tell us a little bit about how much Al Ali Almari means to you guys, because he was, he was wonderful today. Wonderful. He's fantastic every day. I mean, he every is. day in training, everything, the energy he brings to the team, every save he makes in practice. I mean, maybe the spectators are surprised, but none of us are when that happens. It's, it's brilliant the way he works every single day outside of practice, too. We all recognize it. He's one of the leaders on this team, fellow captain, and hats off to him for the performance today and for the performances throughout the season because he has kept us in a lot of games and inspired us to do our best. He made some really good saves. He didn't have to make like a super dynamic save, but I thought that he did a great job of helping you and Miles deal with the crosses. And then he was able to make a couple of big saves. And just the way that he controls the area is he really does it like a professional. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah it's, it's wonderful. It is. I'm so it helps us a lot too. Yeah, this has got to provide a lot of comfort exactly. to, to two center backs. Yeah, for sure. Here at the Michigan Soccer Network, we like to find out what, what you guys eat when you're not doing your thing out on the soccer field. So give us like a favorite candy. Is there a candy you like to eat? Oh, man, it's got to be a Snickers bar. Oh. Snickers bar, yeah. All right, Easy Snickers favorite. always satisfying. Okay, Absolutely. perfect. And then like, you know, maybe three game meal or game day meal. Is there something that you that, that you like to take on board? You know, I actually, I had a, uh, a broccoli cheddar pasta today. That okay. Was, that was the All lunch right. meal. Um, it was a little chicken before it, but the pasta always goes hard. That's the best thing as possible. Gives me the energy I need throughout the game. No cramps or anything like that. We're performing well. All right, man. Congratulations on the Thank wonderful so much. performance. I don't know. I saw Damon around here yeah, I uh, earlier, really and I know we talked before, but uh, he's probably here and wants to talk to you a little bit. But uh, congratulations to you and your team. Awesome performance. Great win tonight. And good luck the rest of the way. Right. Pass off to the guys. All right. To the team, to the coaches. Thank you guys so much for being here. I appreciate it. Yep. Good Thank job, you. Will.